Hello, dear friends. My name is Roigo Cabucho, the lead pastor of Journey ICC, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share a couple of thoughts and to share this moment together with you. How are you? I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're brave. I hope you're doing the best with what this moment um, is presenting to us. Today happens to be the Thursday of the Holy Week. They call it Monday Thursday. And I just thought that starting today for the next three days, um, I could record a few short videos um, that uh, would would allow us to reflect in a deeper way on the story of Easter because it's a, it's a powerful story. It's a transformative story. It's a story that invites us not just to gaze from a distance to be spectators, but when we reflect on it deeply, we realize that Jesus is inviting us to participate in his journey to the cross. It is a pattern for all our lives. And, um, and in a moment like this one, when we are facing a global pandemic, when so much of our lives has been disrupted, the story of Easter means so much more to us in this moment than ever before. And it's so interesting. This is going to be a very unique kind of Easter um, everybody, most people will be in their homes, um, sitting and resting, watching and waiting. And um, that can be good. That has its own complexities. And so over the next few videos, um, one a day, uh, I would like us to reflect and see what's in store for us in this story. So today, I'd like us to read um, from John chapter 13, from verse 1 to 15. Uh, Monday Thursday is all about uh, commemorating the last meal that the disciples had with Jesus and um, he did something so dramatic he bent and washed the feet and so as we read this story uh, I invite you to listen in to 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 read along if you're able uh, but above all to to pay attention to to what is there for you in this story so John chapter 13 from verse 1 to 15 <coughs> Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew his, that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the, to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God, and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a, towel, with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you're clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. And that's the word of the Lord for us now. What a story. What a remarkable story. You know, I think the story of Easter is a big revolution in itself, in its totality. The, the, the trial of Jesus, uh, the sentencing of Jesus, the suffering of Jesus, his crucifixion. He dies, he's buried, and then he rises again.
and 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 just that short um dramatic um episode of his life changes history after jesus and, and it's a major revolution and um i was reading this story that we've just read about um the last supper and and, and jesus washing the feet of his disciples and they thought wow here's another revolution simply because jesus was turning everything upside down he was more aware of who he was in this moment his time to exit the earth was coming he understood that god had given him everything everything was in his hands it means that all power all authority is in him so he understood that he was in a in, in, a, in a very powerful position in in all creation um, and he looked at his disciples and he knows they call him teacher they call him lord and with all that in his mind he gets up takes off his outer and washes the feet of his disciples in other words he's saying power privilege dignity status anything you have been gifted is meant for service it's meant to serve one another it's meant to to wash the feet of another to find out where it hurts most to find out where there is greatest need and to serve and and that's a revolution that our world could have thrived if we grasped it and, and that's one of the ways we can we can we can engage in a deeper way in the story or in this story today uh, but before we get out i would like to draw you to to the other half of the story the other half centers around a man called peter so apparently Peter looks at Jesus and he just can't believe what he's doing. Jesus, are you washing the feet of everyone? Because according to Peter, yeah, you are our Lord and our teacher. And then you are doing such a lowly thing. And he says to Jesus, no, you won't wash my feet. Um, you can't. And, and, and he pushes back and Jesus insists, I have to wash your feet. And um, and Peter says, "Then wash my my hair, my hair, my head, and my hands as well." But Jesus says, "You don't need a full body wash. You're already clean." And I think finally Peter gives in, and 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 his feet are washed. And um, and um, you know, when I thought about Peter, I I saw myself, and I believe I saw most of us in a moment like this. Um, you know, we've been. We've been asked, we've been requested, or we've even been ushered in a moment where we are, most of us are working from home. Uh, most of us, most of our workplaces had to close down. We are in a new season, a new kind of schedule, a new kind of normal. Um, I, I don't even think we are yet to get to normal yet, but we are just transitioning into, into a space we do not know. And it can be very, very uncomfortable. Um... We don't like such a moment. I, for one, have struggled. The days are never the same. One of the days will be really good. I'll wake up, I'll be in a happy mood, almost whistling and humming beautiful songs and working, and at the end of the day, I'll be like, yeah, that was a really good day. Um, then, almost like clockwork, the next day comes, and, and I just feel this low mood, and, and I don't want to do anything, and I'm, you know, and I'm uh, questioning the meaning of life. It, it's been such a strange season for me, and um, one of my struggles has been just the feeling that, wow, I'm, I'm just indoors. I feel like I want to be up and about. Uh, I'm just looking around, and I'm like, by the way, people are suffering. What am I doing here? I have no ideas. I, I feel like I'm just doing so little. Um, um, I have this angst within me that this moment needs to change. This moment needs to pass away quickly. Not to mention, you know, the news that's coming up, that's coming to our ears every day, and um, and all the suffering we're seeing out there. And, and you can get scared. And and this is not a pleasant season. This is not a moment we are willing to to embrace gratefully right we are willing to embrace gratefully and that's how peter's story reminds us of who we are at this moment we want this moment to pass um we 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 are so used to defining our moments defining our schedules um we're so used to orchestrating what we want with our days with 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 our tasks and now that all all, all of that is nowhere um, and we feel not in control and not in charge, and, and we do not like that. Um, and we're pushing back against this moment. We want this 
moment to pass by quickly. Um, however, when I was reading this story, I felt something different, a different kind of invitation. We are being invited in the midst of all this to have a posture of embracing um, the moment in front of us with humility. And, um, and that seems a bit weird. Like, yeah, I know this moment is not pleasant. This moment is not your preference so much as up in the air. Yeah, but we are being invited to embrace the moment in front of us with humility so that it can teach us, so that it can, you know, attend to us in a way, um, so that we can allow all those questions that are surfacing from deep within to just surface so that we can have whatever kind of conversations we need to have also that we can simply rest be at rest and 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 and, and be reminded that life sometimes is not being about um always being in control and in charge um that as we nurture our lives nature sometimes has to attend to us and uh, and we just have to sit and watch and it's it's not a comfortable place to be in but a place where we can learn a lot where we can learn a lot so i I imagine if Peter would have been more stubborn and told Jesus, no, you wouldn't wash my feet, I'd rather walk out. You know, this very powerful story that we always read, that means so much, would have been told without the story of Peter. And I'm sure when all was said and done, when Jesus died and rose again and ascended into heaven, all those disciples were grateful that each of their feet were washed by Jesus. They had a story of how Jesus attended to them in that moment. And as Peter can attest, it wasn't comfortable. You know, for us, it, this is not a comfortable moment. But could it be that Jesus has rolled up his sleeves and is attending to us with all our brokenness, with all our hang-ups, um, with all the ways we have thought we are in control or we are powerful. And Jesus is humbly bending a knee and washing us and, and inviting us to see that, that life is about being more humble than we have been. There, there's a lesson to this moment. Um, if we can just sit back in, in surrender and just say, um, you know, I've done my best with this day. I've done my best with this season, but there's still more that I do not know. Lord, can I listen to you? Attend to me. And I think that's what um, uh, this story is inviting us to, you know, to humbly receive the moment, um, to regularly pause and just ask ourselves, God, how are you present here? How are you present in my life? What are you calling me to? Um, so that's what I'm learning from this story in this present moment. And um, in conclusion, I would just like to invite you again. What if you just take some time today and um, read those couple of verses, John 13, 1 to 15. Um, read them slowly a couple of times. See what stands out for you hear God's heart in that, in, in that scripture and see how he's inviting you to live and um, we'll discover that there's so much more and uh, and so my dear friends as we go through this challenging um, uncertain moment may God be with you whether in pandemic whether in isolation whether in social distancing whether in the midst of so much uh, um, uh, uncertainty God is still our good shepherd. We are still the flock of his pasture, the sheep in his hands. And, um, and he's present. And he's looking, looking at us and just getting to work and seeing how to fashion us more and more um, into all that he envisions. So hopefully we can learn to surrender to what this moment has in store for us. And uh, God willing, when it's all said and done, we'll emerge out of this with some treasures, some deep treasures that God has gifted to us in his grace. So may the blessing of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, may you have a truly meaningful season this Easter. God bless you.